The basic principle of a refractometer is quite simple. Different substances bend light to varying extents. You can use this to determine the concentration of that substance. The only thing that doesn't bend light is a vacuum, which has a refractive index of zero. Let's start by quickly running through the working parts of a refractometer. I'll use my old Cabris one as an example because all the elements are split up on this. Any refractometer requires a prism. The prism is effectively what captures the degree of bend of the light. In this old one, you can see there's the back of the prism and the front of the prism here. So the light comes through the prism with whatever it is you want to measure sandwiched between the two elements. The bend that the honey in this instance gives to the light is then captured against a reference point. To do this, light has to come through. And that light comes through in this quaint old thing via a mirror at the bottom which you move in exactly the same way that we would move one of our handheld refractometers like this towards the light so that we can actually push the light down through that prism and out through that eyepiece. Let's just refresh ourselves then. A honey refractometer. You have the eyepiece. We have the calibration neural that I'm not going to touch, but we'll talk about that later. We have the prism where the sample goes and the prism cover. Here's the honey sample we're going to be using today. It's the remains of one of the first jars of rape from this year. Now in this instance it's actually quite easy to do this test because this has been sat in the kitchen, it's roughly at 20 degrees. My refractometer is also at 20 degrees. Just ensure that that is the case, especially if you're doing refractometer tests as I do on honey coming straight off of the comb before I extract it to make sure that I'm at the right levels. The honey coming out of the hive may well be warmer than that, especially if it's a hot summer's day. And you do need to make sure that you allow it to cool down to 20 degrees to ensure you've got an accurate result. Let's load it. Some of this year's crop. Last of the first pot. And the objective is to get a good sample onto the prism and you want a good even coating. The one thing you definitely don't want is any air bubbles because what you're interested in measuring is the interface between the honey and the prism which is where you get your refractive index from. Now hopefully you can see this, as you push the cover plate down, I'm pushing honey out around the prism and I've got a full contact between the honey and the prism. That should ensure that there's no air bubbles, that should give us a good, clear, defined reading. If we apply that to honey, then the concentration of the sugars in the honey have a cumulative refractive index. That allows you to determine the concentration of the sugars in the honey. On that basis, you can make a calculation, which is often done for you on the refractometer scale, that then lets you know how much moisture is left. That level of moisture is what determines the stability of the honey and its propensity to either support or stop the growth of particularly yeasts and molts. So we've got a loaded refractometer. The one thing I can't really show you here is adjusting the eyepiece. But as you can see, the eyepiece swivels. That doesn't change the outcome of the reading. It simply changes the focus. For me, I'm a glasses wearer and I actually find it easier to take my glasses off and to then adjust the eyepiece because you then get a good contact with the eyepiece. There's no extra light coming in and generally speaking, it's much easier to make a reading on that basis. So, here we are looking down the refractometer. You can see that this is my spring crop. End of the first jar at home. And it's just reading around about 81 in terms of bricks, which corresponds to about 17.5, 17.6 in terms of a moisture content. 
is the difference between dark blue and the light blue that gives you the measurement. A final point on calibration. A refractometer allows you to make judgments on whether or not your honey is ripe. In other words, whether the bees have reduced the moisture content down to a sufficient level that it will be stable. Now it's okay looking at a frame and deciding whether or not the majority of the frame has been capped and on that basis whether or not the honey is mature enough to pot. But a refractometer takes that judgment away. In order to take that judgment away it has to be a known reference point and on that basis you do need to be able to calibrate your refractometer from time to time. When I bought this refractometer the first thing I did was to decant some olive oil that we happen to have in the kitchen. As it happens cold pressed virgin olive oil has a refractive index of somewhere between 71 and 72 depending on the exact composition of the oil. By checking the reading of the refractometer as soon as I bought it against a known reference point of the olive oil that won't change. I've now got a point at which I can calibrate back to should I need to. In other words, the refractometer may change in terms of its settings, but the olive oil won't change in terms of its refractive index. To calibrate, I'm going to do exactly the same as I did with the honey. I'm going to load the prism with olive oil. harder because it's thinner but again I need to ensure that I've got a good even coating of olive oil over the prism so that there are no air bubbles that looks about right I'm going to close that down and you can see it go dark as the olive oil spreads and covers the prism there the refractometer is now loaded the refractometer is reading just on 71, so that's exactly the same as it was when I bought this one a year or so ago, and that means it's still, as far as I'm concerned, in calibration. I don't need to make any adjustments. In this instance the refractometer is accurate. It's still reading 71 which it was when I bought it. However, if I did need to adjust it, I've removed this rubber cap here and underneath that, I hope you can see that, there is a small adjustment screw and what that adjustment screw does is move the scale in the refractometer up or down. So if you have a rest reference oil in there, like my olive oil, that you know is at 71, you can then use that screw to adjust the scale back so that it's reading 71 as it should. In that way, you're calibrating back to a known, which is the olive oil for me. Alternatively, you can spend quite a lot of money and buy a reference oil. It's your call, really. Your final task before you finished is to clean the refractometer. Use warm water and make sure that you very effectively removed all material from the prism and the prism cover. Vitally important that you don't have anything left over and it's also really important that you clean and dry it immediately because you don't want any film of calcium salts or similar from the water to build up on the prism you want to make sure that you've got a good contact between your sample and the prism there. That's clean, that's dry, we know it's calibrated, goes back in the box, ready for hopefully another good honey harvest.